and I'll introduce Diana. Diana is our financial advocacy program manager and she is specializing in financial help for multiple myeloma and AMO patients as a professional financial advisor and former caregiver of her husband who was diagnosed with multiple myeloma. Diana perfectly understands the financial issues facing cancer in patients. So our topic today is how to change your lifestyle to reduce spending. And I'll turn the time over to Diana. Thank you, Marisol. Thanks to everyone who attends these meetings. I hope you find them beneficial um, either now or later on in your lives. Um, please feel free to spread the information to people you may see sitting in your doctor's offices or people in your local support groups. We would greatly appreciate it because we found that all the information that we are offering um, patients via webinars, via articles, via Health Tree University, through all these particular different areas are becoming invaluable to all of our patients. So please continue to follow us and spread the news. I want to go through some of the changes that you may have may, may not have heard about or the concerns that are being addressed right now through um, Joe Biden legislation, and it will probably be ongoing. Um, through the Affordable Care Act, there's been a lot of unsavory actors, generally brokers or agents, who are changing people from one insurance plan to the other. Unfortunately, that's it's it's sad, but what they do is they make money off of that. They make money not off of you, but by the through the insurance company, which includes, increases insurance rates because these are things that are being done fraudulently. And it's not just happening to one time. A person, people have been finding themselves multiply changed multiple times between different insurance plans without their knowledge. So I would encourage you if you you get this information from a broker who's asked telling you trying to sell you on um, different rates or cheaper rate or, or alternative or other types of coverage, beware because they're also to getting your information. And if they're unsavory with selling out of your life insurance and buying into another one, you don't know what else they're giving out. Um, that's why even when I talk about Medicare Advantage, Medicare plans, go to good sources to get your information and to sign up for your insurance because you can be targeted um, in, in this horrible, horrible scheme that's going on. So I wanted to let you be aware of that. If you have any problems with that, contact your local, your state insurance um, department. And there are actually some class action suits going on. If you find that's an issue, please contact your life and your in Kentucky or like here, the Kentucky Insurance um, Department or your state insurance department. They will know how to handle that. So here's how to change your lifestyle to reduce spending. That could probably conjure up some negative things, but you would be surprised that when you are in control of what's how your money is being spent coming in, going out, how much control you actually have over that and how it doesn't really necessarily reduce your lifestyle. You just become more aware of what you're doing. Um, and then you're not lost with trying to figure out where your money went from week to week or month to month or paycheck to paycheck. So I thought this might be something that, could, that would apply to all of us. I know that it does. Um, to every single one, to any, anybody walking around who has a job or even doesn't have a job, job how you, your lifestyle is actually affecting your spending and your saving and your ability to do things. So we're gonna go over some basic things that you can do to be aware of um, to help rein in some of that unconscious spending. Uh, Marisol, is it, is it possible to take our um, us off of the screen? Thank you. That way I can see, everybody can see the entire screen because I don't think they're able to see the entire screen. Yeah. Okay. I think uh, they need to change it manually on the view part. Okay. Okay, if we can go back to where we were, that'll be great then. I'll, I'll okay. just make sure. Can you see uh, my screen? Right now yes. I'm seeing you. I'm not seeing the, the slides. Um, Let me try again. That's better, right there. Oh. Perfect. Can you put, okay. Can you put yourself up, uh, our, our faces up to the top versus to the side? I think you need to change it on the top 
uh, right corner of your screen where it says view, you can change that. No, that took away my thing. Um, um, this is this is fine right here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, um, are we at the first slide? Yes. Okay, so what kind of things do you need to change and why? So I know this could be overwhelming um, because I've done this on several occasions and I would encourage you guys to also look at your lifestyle, where you're spending your money um, and, and, and these big areas of life when you have inflation and all these other things going on. It's a really good time to initiate that like, you know, every year or sometimes you're changing your batteries in your, in your, um, um, fire things in your ceiling and your or your your um light bulbs it's a great really good time to do this as well results i'm telling you can be worth it i've done this i first time i did this was years ago my husband and i were looking at um i was going to be stopping work to stay home with my young kids and to try to figure out where our money was going and even though i felt like i didn't leave home there was money that was going out to buying coffee to stopping and getting lunch to taking the kids on thing i mean there's a lot of stuff that we did um and even the way we shopped was not very financial savvy and so i'm going to go through some of these things that you could be aware of be mindful of how you spend your money and you be that way you'll be aware of where your money is going and where you can really direct other discretionary spending so how do you know what's being wasteful so here's some steps to take so I would suggest you get a sheet and we have some online um, in our financial area where you can have sheets about what you're spending every month. And that would mean every time you stop at a service station to buy just, not just gas, but if you go in and get a drink or some chewing gum or whatever, you need to keep a note of that because those things add up. So keep an accounting of everything you spend in a month, everything. So keep that sheet in your car, in your pocket somewhere. Include those stops at Starbucks and lunches. So or going to a movie or, 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 or whatever you're doing, keep track of every single penny you're spending. For the first month, it can be kind of daunting, but it's going to add up. It's going to really pay off big. So you can find a link to some of these helpful resources at www.consumer.gov. They have different types of sheets, whatever's convenient for you or you think works for you. They have a lot for you to choose from. So this Budget-friendly app will, will help you see how and where you're spending your money so you can take appropriate actions. Where you can, if you realize you're short on saving, you know, you might be spending that saving every time you go out without being aware of it. The next slide. So what are your goals? In order to determine where you need to direct money, where you're having a shortfall, you need to find out, sit down in writing and say, what are your goals and what are your needs? There are goals or things we think we want to do. And then there are needs, things that have to be accomplished. So put those things down in paper. And I'll tell people that if you don't have it down in, in paper, you don't have it in writing where you can see it, then it's just a dream in your head. Um, when you write things down, it becomes, becomes real, right? And it becomes something that you can plan for. So do you need to increase emergency funds? This is where I find almost everyone has a shortfall. We don't pay ourselves first. We pay for our bills and we pay for everything else. But when we need money in a, in a, in a pinch, like we our, our, our um, air conditioning went out or something happened to a car, where you could get that money from. And going to a credit card is not a emergency fund. That is just setting you up for that is just setting you up for some problems down the road because now you have interest. You're paying out more than what the actual um, issue is. So are you running short on money weekly, monthly, or at the end of the year? So do you have a car repair or home maintenance that's coming up? These are things that we have emergency funds for or a savings goal um, as a different plan to make sure that you're able to manage anything that's going to ha happen so you won't be thrown for a loop or try to borrow money to pay, borrow from Peter to pay Paul. So I would suggest you make two lists. What do you need to take care of? What are the required needs? And what do you want or those goals or things that are just things that you want? They have, there's money that's going to be directed at two of those things, but the most important things are things you need, right? So let's go through this. Next slide. When you have those two lists complete, and I would say even the smallest thing added on there, because what is, and if you have a, if you're married, I would suggest 
your spouse or your significant other, you both do your own list because you'll be surprised at how you think you're on the same page with everything, how you could be completely different, especially for long-term goals where you're sitting aside saving money for, for retirement, for, for a, um, a move, for buying a house. All of those things may be different in your mind, even what you spoke to about um, than what you actually are trying to achieve. So make sure you're on the same page. Prioritize each of those lists. That's a needs list and the, re and the required list from the most important to the least important. So this is where you're going to start realizing, you know, where you really need to spend your money or what you want to spend your money on. So, and don't forget about those things you don't like. It's not there every day in your face, like those obscure things you don't think of often that can autom that can automatically withheld from your checking account, like those um, subscriptions to those things you did a long time ago, and you don't know what you're actually paying for, those $4, those $3, those things that may even increase without you being aware of it, like your Netflix accounts, and those things go up. Those things can really add up. In fact, I looked at that last year. I had no idea how many things I had just on a whim signed up for. And it was like $80, these things I weren't even using, $80 a month. That's That can be significant. That can that can really help you with a debt, pay off a debt, have money in an emergency account to make sure you have your co-pays, deductibles, and things like that paid for, or trips. So I would suggest you look at those things. There is an app out there where you could, that'll help you find all of your subscriptions online and you can determine which ones you need and you can delete the ones you don't. I would suggest you look into doing that. Even if you haven't, even if you don't think you sign up for subscriptions, I'll tell you in the middle of the night when you're bored or tired or something's going on, you may be distracted watching television at the same time, you probably have signed up for something, even if you weren't aware of it, one or two things that you can you can um, take off and put that money back in your pocket. So that's where a lot of lost money can be found in those subscriptions. How many people have a subscription to a gym? I will raise my hand. I have spent thousands and thousands of dollars over the years with the great goal in mind to work out, even though I have a gym in my house, I have every type of product known to man in a gym at home. But I say, well, it's better to go to a gym because I'll actually get it done. And how many years later, when I only went two or three times, I was still paying for that subscription. There's a lot of lost money out there and I think we need to find it. Next slide. So get on a budget. I know that budget seems like, oh, this is so so constricting. It's, it's, you know, I just, I don't want to be bothered. Well, you know what? It's better to know where your money's going, how much is coming in, where it's going, so you can plan than to be in a crisis and not know anything that's going on. Once you set it up, it flows and you're and you're more mindful of what you're doing, which means you're able to to turn on a dime if you need to, because you know what's going on. So track your spending and getting on a budget can help you become more mindful of everything you spend your money on. And it can actually help you determine whether you can pay for that goal or you can add a goal or, or something you need in the future. Save for emergencies. This is the number one thing that gets you completely off track. Make sure you have money set up for the emergency. There's, there's cash reserves. Cash reserves are set up for and it's always being funded um, for anything that goes on or like emergencies. And, and you can tier that and having money like one or two months available immediately and then have the others tiered and maybe a short-term CD. Something's going to earn interest, but you still have access to it. So there's different ways to set up for emergencies. Some where it's not going to earn hardly any interest at all. And others can be for long-term emergencies or long-term goals or needs in the future. That can be um, getting compounded interest as well. So this helps pre prevent you from putting expenses on a credit card and paying the interest, especially when the interest rate environment right now is, extreme, is extremely high. One of the other things I would suggest, and I'm going to go through this a little bit further in the um, webinar, but I think it, it pays to talk to about, about it right now, is if you have a credit card, you know what that credit card interest rate is. And I would hope everybody knows what their credit card interest rate is. And look at that, because when you first signed up, it says it gave you a range maybe 14% to 23%. Look at it. It's probably closer to that 23 or that highest interest rate now because of the interest rate environment. Look around, get on Experian. Experian is great for you to track your credit. 
make sure nobody's doing things without you knowing about it, but it helps you understand what your credit picture looks like. They also give you tips on how to increase your credit. And they also give you tips on how, what kind of, um, what your debt is, like your, your um, cars or any other loans out there. And if you actually qualify for a 0% interest rate that can go for 18 months, maybe you can transfer some of those high interest rates into a 0% interest rate for over 18 months and start paying it down. So that means more money in your pocket because you're not paying those interest rates, right? So that's, and I'm gonna repeat that again because that is huge. A lot of people don't think about that option. The next slide. Sell or get rid of things you don't need. There was a program on television, I don't know if it's still on, where they would go into a person's house and find things and say, I bet I can find something that's sitting here that's going to raise you, it's going to give you some money. You'd be surprised. Every year, our subdivision, it's a small subdivision, it's, and, and they have a neighborhood yard sale. And the night before, I'm like, I don't want to do it. It's time consuming. It's all day on Saturday or Sunday. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it. So I went around my house, and it's a great way to get rid of clutter or things you thought you needed but don't need, but put money in your pocket. I went around and found things and put it out, and you don't have to do any work. You're just sitting there talking to your neighbors, talking to people to walk by. It's actually really quite quite fun, if, especially if the grandkids, and they're like looking at things. It could be actually a great time. I was able to raise three or four, almost, almost $4,000 that day within a seven-hour period. How many pieces of, pieces of furniture or appliances um, even small appliances or kitchen, rugs, pictures, clothing, things you don't need. People are really looking for things like that because they don't want to spend the high prices on full prices on some furniture that may be gently used or, or, or yard equipment, really huge yard equipment, things that they're doing themselves. There's money that's sitting in probably everybody's houses of things they can sell relatively easy. Get rid of cable. Why are people still on cable? Cable is expensive. Why are you paying for something for all these channels you probably don't even look at? Be selective. If you want to do Netflix, you want movies or Hulu, you can buy a Hulu, uh, a little Hulu thing, attach it to your television if you don't have a smart television and only watch the things you want. And it's a whole lot cheaper than having cable. Cable is becoming a pariah. It's becoming that big elephant in the room. It's becoming the dinosaur. And getting buying into something that you want versus all this other stuff is a good way to save money. And again, cancel all those unused subscriptions, um, magazines, newspapers. If you're, I know people who who get the New York Times in the mail as well as subscribe online. I'm thinking why? You know, I don't I don't understand the concept, but you may have duplicate things going on out there. Next slide. Check your insurance. This is huge. And I wish I could get everybody to understand this. So you need to check your homeowner's insurance. If you bought your home, great, you could have a great company, great, wonderful, a lot of good, there's great insurance companies out there. If you have not checked your insurance, homeowner's insurance within the last couple of years, the way your insurance was constructed at that time was based on divisors and things happening in the economy at that time. I would suggest you go in and call your homeowner and say, I want to have my home reevaluated. And you can do a lot of that by looking on Zillow, looking on your tax records, how much your house is actually worth. Make sure that you're not just doing, that you're doing a replacement cost, not just whatever it is. You're actually spending, the, the money is actually going to cover the cost of replacing your home. But a lot of insurance companies have, when you're buying that insurance, they have, they're automatically going to multiply every year because they're assuming, assuming that your house is going to increase in value every year. Don't just look at the value, look at the replacement costs. And if they're doing that, they're increasing, your, your policies uh, premium is accommodating that. In addition to that, a lot of big insurance companies may also have another line item where you're paying, and they don't go through this line item by line item, that you're paying an additional, that your house are going to give you an additional 25% every year. Is your house increasing 25% every year? I wish mine was because everybody here would be a millionaire when they go to sell their house, right? That is not true. I actually found that out after a period of time of being with a large insurance company for nine years 
found out that they were charging me for something. And I, and my husband said he, he had called at one point years when I talked to him about this years and years ago. And they said, oh, um, it's no big deal. Every insurance company, and we have to do that. No, 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 no. They don't have to do that. That's not required by any insurance company. What is What they're doing is they're making more money off of you. And I was able to save $6,000 on my homeowner's insurance every single year. Look at it, please. This is a huge market that insurance companies are doing to make more money. Um, your rates may be going up because of all the things that are going on globally because we share we share the cost of, of damage like a, a tornadoes, hurricanes, but you should not be getting an additional 25% or 10% increase on your the value of your house every year in addition to what is already increasing on, on your policy. That's just not happening. So your home may be overinsured. Review, because they're only going to give you what the replacement cost is. Not gonna, if, if your home is insured on your policy for $900,000, but your house is only, replacement cost is only five hundred, dollars they're not going to give you, say, oh, you did this. They're not going to give you additional $400,000 in your pocket. So why are you giving them money? So um, make sure you look at that. Look at your tax records. And if you're paying too much, make sure your taxes are reduced accordingly. So also make sure you're, that you're not underinsured. If you haven't had a claim on your homeowner's insurance or an accident or a ticket on your driving record, or even if you're older, check your insurance rates. Insurance rates can be reduced. If you use your car only a several miles or a few miles every day and you, or you're not using it for working purposes, there's a lot that can be done on your premiums to reduce it. Do you need a very low deductible or do you have enough money to set aside instead of doing a $250 deductible or $500 deductible? You have a great driving record. Why do you need a record of deductible so low? Maybe push it up to a thousand. If you haven't had any accidents, you may have that money already sitting aside if you need if you're gonna have that um, issue in the future anyway, but save the money and maybe put it into a savings account. Next slide. Save on water and sewer costs. Check for leaking faucets and toilets. You may not hear the water running, but it may be running in the background, maybe filling up your toilet. And, and you're not aware of it. Um, you can put dye in your tank, in your toilet. And if you find that water is now sitting in your toilet bowl, then you have a leak that water is adding, that is adding up. Don't water grass di daily in the summer. You know what? I, I, I love a beautiful yard. I do. I want my yard to be cut specifically. I, want, I don't want them to trim it to edge it too far. I want my yard to look beautiful. But does it make much sense when the temperature is going to be 100 degrees for the, for two or three weeks and or, or longer and you're not getting enough rain for you to continue watering it? What does what does that say about what our values are? I've, and, and I'm not trying to say that your values are different, but what does it say about me? What's important? Is it feeding grass? This is what happens. Grass goes dormant. It's going to it's going to green up again when it when it rains. I think we need to start looking at ways to, to be not just short, short term focused on saving money and being, I think, environmentally responsible, but long term as well. So maybe you want to start looking at native grasses or native flowers and things that's not only going to help bring butterflies and, and, and all these other things back, but also reduce our time and effort in the yard and make everything more based, spend less money on, on water. Dial up your thermostat in the summer and dial down in the winter. I, I one of those people used to go, you know, switch it up, switch it up. When my husband wasn't watching, I'd switch it up. He'd say, why is it so hot in here? I'm thinking, well, it's cold. You know, switch it up. There's things we can do to offset some of the heat in the summer. Put um, curtains, or if you have blinds, turn the blinds up where the, when the summer, when the, the sun hits the window, it's reflected out. It's not warming up your room, which means you're just going to be warm. You want to dial the temperature down in, in the winter, whereas you're using more air conditioning. When it's 100 degrees outside, you go outside, you come back in, and and it feels like, oh, my God, it's so cold in here until your body, your body gets used to it. Why not turn your thermostat up to maybe 75 or 77? Because when you're out at 100, 77 feels awfully good. You're coming in, and but we get so accustomed to having things down, having things down. They may be putting on a sweater in the house in the summer. Doesn't really make sense. Where you're spending that energy, it doesn't make sense. 
if you have a gas stove and I have a gas stove, gas used to be a thing, and I'm, you know, environmentally, I need to start thinking about this because 65% on a gas stove is that energy is wasted. So you're spending money on gas, your house is heating up in the summer and you're, and, and you're turning the air down because it's hot because of the, the gas stove. There's a lot of things I think we need to start looking at. If, you, if you're going to need to replace, re, replace appliances, look at electric or look at induction because the gas stoves are not environmentally friendly and they're not healthy to the environment for you to breathe. So there's a lot of things there. Close your curtains and blinds again against the sun, against the summer sun to keep the heat out and open it in the winter to bring the heat in. Again, turn down the thermostat on your hot water heater, big one. I, I rarely do this, I, I, I will admit. I love to get in a hot shower 365 days of the year. I mean, hot, hot. I love hot, hot. But it's not good for your skin. It's not good for your, your bill, especially if you're using gas. It's just not good. So think about what is good for cleaning your dishes because you want to get those as clean as possible with the hottest water. But you don't want to get in where you're going to have to worry about scalding yourself when you get in hot water as well. I almost like scalding. It's terrible. It's terrible. But I just love hot water. And change the filters on the furnace. You'd be surprised at how often we forget that, but it really puts puts a lot of uh, work on your furnace and you're actually reducing the efficacy of the furnace and you're spending more money on the cooling and the heating cost. Next slide. Change your light bulbs to LED. They last longer. They're not getting, giving off all that heat and you're spending less on your electric bill. Turn off lights and rooms that are not being used. This is a daily thing in my house. I don't understand. I don't understand why in the middle of the day, lights have to be on and it's sun shiny. I, I, I don't know. Add an attic fan if possible. I remember my grandmother having one of these when I was a kid. I used to think it was cool because you feel everything moving. Um, but it's amazing how an attic fan can really reduce, even in the summer, the hottest summer, your temperature inside your house. Turn your ceiling fans on. They, they use less energy than your air conditioning. And open doors, especially in the evening when there's a maybe cooler, to circulate air in your house. And the, cool, the ceiling fans don't necessarily cool the air. It cools your skin so you feel more comfortable. Maybe get a dehumidifier to take the moisture out of your hair, the air that makes your hair, your um your home cooler in the summer as well. Again, update your home thermostat. Next slide. So how healthy, healthy eating can translate to cost savings. I know this sounds weird because you go to a food store and you're like, you know, just vegetables. I don't really fill up on vegetables and fruit, but you know, it says, I know it's healthier for me, but how can I save on money? Because you're spending a lot more money, especially if you go to a health food market on that food. Okay, let's look at this. And I did this and I'm every week when I clean out my refrigerator, there's a lot of food I'm throwing away. Instead of grocery shopping for several weeks at a time, buy for a few days only. And I saw this when I went to Europe recently. They don't buy a whole lot of food and they buy a lot of fruits and vegetables in the Mediterranean area and they're eating what they're buying. They're not throwing it away, letting it sit in the in the fruit and the vegetable bins and refrigerator and it's going bad. And how many times have we open the refrigerator and say, we, we don't really want that, but it's not bad enough to throw away. <laughs> That's money down the drain. And we often buy on impulse. Never go shopping on an empty stomach because you end up shopping on the interior of the grocery store where you have a lot of the enriched and, and all this food that's not good for you with a lot of preservatives versus on the perimeter where you'll find your produce, your fresh produce. That's the best place to go. Again, when you impulse buy or buy when you're hungry, you're getting less quality foods that you're purchasing. Loss of money, throwing away money. Food loss and waste, shop with a list. If you're gonna buy something and buy it for several days only so it won't go bad in your refrigerator, go with the list. And you know that's specifically what you're going for. You're not going to get off track. You're going to buy with that list. And you that way you're going to have your meals prepared. Next slide. So prepping, prepping your food can save you a lot of time and money. Cooking for several days in advance um, and taking uh, lunches, that should be lunches, not inches, to work can really save on money, um, especially with the high cost in food. I went to... I don't know. I rarely go to a drive drive through, but I was rushing to do something the other day, and I went. I got a 
I, I just asked for a burger. I didn't and a drink. I didn't want anything else. I didn't want fries and I didn't want everything large. And it was still twelve dollars. I'm thinking I could have bought, I could have bought a pound or two of burger. Could have had several burgers down the road. Could have had a burger. Could have had spaghetti sauce. You know all these other things. And you're we're spending so much time um, driving, gas driving. Um, even though it, we think the time is is valuable to us, but are we really helping ourselves physically, health health wise, and are we saving money on doing it? No. We need, I think, more mindful cooking will help us save money. You have less food waste, you have more time on your hands, and it costs much, much less than eating out. Don't grocery shop again when you're hungry. Shop from the perimeter store first, get your needs, your fruits, your vegetables, your lean meats, and then come in and buy your things like maybe your, sp your spaghetti, uh, your pastas, and things like that. Next slide. So generally when you're eating well, it leads to better health outcome, health, health outcomes, um, possibly um, lower, um, lower um, insulin levels. Maybe you don't have high blood pressure. You don't have the heart problems. You don't have obesity and the problems that cause, which means that down the road, you're actually saving your money on healthcare costs, which we know are not going down. You have a healthier weight, cheaper insurance costs, if you've lost weight or stopped smoking, it's a big one. If you have life insurance and you and your life insurance premium is so high because you were smoking or is so high because your weight was high, after a period of time, generally it's within a year, you can have your insurance agent review your life insurance policy after you've stopped smoking for a year or you've lost that weight because now you're in a different weight of a different insurance band and your premiums can possibly and more likely be reduced. When you're going out to eat something I found that I spent a lot of money on, don't buy drinks or desserts because they are at a premium. You go in there for a glass of wine, a glass of wine, um, $9, $12. When they upcharge everything on those drinks, it could be that bottle of wine could may have only been a $16 buy, bottle of wine, but you're paying $12, $9, $12 on a, on a glass. The cost of restaurants are priced at a premium all the time. So, and desserts. You know, maybe skip the dessert and have a dessert at home. Saving, cost savings for everything. Next slide. Car maintenance, huge. You know, you get this, at least my car warns me that it's time to take your car in for maintenance every 5,000 miles, or you need to get your cars, cars, your tires changed. And I used to say, why do we have to do this so often? But skipping those maintenance it's going to mean a higher bill for maintenance or repairs down the road. It can save your car hundreds, not thousands. If you don't do that oil change, you can end up with a messed up engine. And we know engines are expensive, not just for the engine itself, but also for the labor. Take public transportation available or walk. Walk or ride your bike. I was surprised at, it was frightening, um, but when I went to Europe, everybody's riding bikes and they're in Paris with cars and everything everywhere with these narrow streets and they're zipping in and out cars while they're moving. And I'm thinking, why are there not bodies laying all over the place? I was, I had to close my eyes and say, don't open your eyes. It was the most frightening thing I'd ever seen. And people even carry their babies on their, their babies, baby babies in these things on their bikes. And I'm thinking, you know, you have to grow up like that. And then it's, it's not frightening, but they're walking they're, they're walking everywhere and they're carrying their fruits and their vegetables. There's fruit markets everywhere. And I think that if we look at that and maybe mimic and uh, some of the things that other countries are doing, I think we can better our health, not just physically, emotionally, and mentally as well. And we can save money on costs down the road. Next slide. Saving on travel. Do I do the travel costs, all of that? Can we go back? Yeah, we did. So when you're going out, when you have a car, when you have, when you have a car and you're living like me, where I have to have transportation in the part of town I live in, consider when you're going out to do grocery shopping, maybe pick up your prescriptions and things at the same time. Maybe finding your prescriptions, putting your prescriptions in the same place where you get your groceries. Um, sometimes you may find that instead of being in your CVS, I'm not talking about those specialty drugs you need for cancers, but some of your other medications can be maybe less expensive at your um, um CV at your um, grocery stores where they have in 
in um, in store pharmacies, or a lot of the hospitals where you have maybe your cancer care or your doctor's offices, they're having their own pharmacies where you can, as a as a neighborhood, go and get your prescription still there. And sometimes they are less expensive than going to your CVSs or your Walgreens. So consider using those things as well. Now, credit card debt, this is where we're talking about looking at zero interest rate cards and, and transferring those, those um, balances on there so you can reduce the money coming out of pocket and you pay your card off faster. Use cash instead of credit cards because you're just spending more on that interest. Pay off your debt. There's I, I'm, there's ways to pay off your debt by looking at the highest highest interest rate card, paying it off first, and uh, not just paying the minimum on the other ones with a lower interest rate, paying off more on your on your high interest rate cards, and then when that's paid off, then then transfer that other that money onto some of your other um, debt. Next slide. Review your W four. There's a big thing people forget. Do you find yourself getting money back every year in your tax return? Some people look forward to that. As a matter of fact, that's their savings program. But there's other savings programs you could do to get where you can get your interest on it versus letting the government get interest on your money. What would you rather? Would you rather the government hold your money that you know you're going to get returns on, or would you rather you own your or hold your money, put it into a savings account or something that's earn, earning interest all year long? instead of having a government just send you your money. Can you be more tax efficient? Can this money be redirected to your savings account that's earning interest for you or CD or paying high interest rate bills or paying off debt? Consider changing your deductions on your, w, on your deductions on your W-4. If you have it at zero deductions, they are gonna be holding out the most in taxes. The more deductions you have on there, they're going to be reducing what they pay out. So consider who do you want to hold your money and where you want to be? Do you want the U.S. government to give it to you every year if, if, it's, if you overpaid in taxes? Or do you want to be able to use that money when you have it? Next slide. Again, use cash instead of credit. Um, be more mindful, especially with healthcare cost. Try not to put your bills on a credit card because it becomes a domino effect down the road with you end up paying more and more out of your own pocket. Next slide. Again, pay off outstanding debt systematically. Again, paying off the higher interest rate debt first by applying more than the minimum due and then only the minimum due on the lower interest rate until you've paid off that higher debt and then redirect it to the others. Next slide. Consolidate debt. If you can, consider getting a home equity loan if the rate is lower than the debt interest rate and pay off the debt. If you can get a, a loan that's lo lower than your debt interest rate and you can still manage it, it'll be less, still less money out of pocket. Or consider transferring high interest rate to a lower or zero interest rate card and save on the interest fees that are attached to those cards. You must pay off the promotional zero credit period to avoid additional interest and fees later on down the road. So if you have a card you transfer to that says zero interest for 18 months, make sure you pay that balance you're transferring over there in that period of time, because after the end of that, you're going to see this huge balance on your account if you haven't paid those things off, including the interest and fees attached. Next slide. So... I did a seminar webinar last year is about additional things that cancer patients have access to at zero or reduced cost. And some of these things are really fun, very enjoyable, and you get away. Um, so think about these and they're and they're free to cancer patients and and you may be at a camp or you may go fishing, maybe just for women, maybe families or just men only. We always talk about trying to reduce co-payments and deductibles and all those things are no fun that you have to do. But why not think about respite from all this stuff for yourself and your family? Think about doing something that's going to regenerate you emotionally and physically and, and mentally. So if you're a cancer patient, consider looking to sports, entertainment venues, and camp activities that you may have access to at a reduced or no cost to you. 
Many times families can benefit as well. Sometimes they have them for an entire family and they could be three or four days or just for the weekend. They provide the food, they provide the housing. You just have to give your car drive to get there or however you get there. They have them all over the country. Those sports things like Super Bowls or, or any of your local teams, professional and local teams, a lot of times they have seats set aside for handicapped, seats set aside for other people. You don't know until you call and ask. A lot of times there's even traveling for your TARC or your 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 um, train or all these things can be available for you because you're a cancer patient. I know a lot of people shiver or, or, or turn their noses at, and, and that's fine, everybody's different, is I don't want anybody to consider me as a cancer patient, as a patient. And that is fine. Everybody has their has how they feel about themselves or how they want to be presented to the world. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But if you are tight on money, but you need to get away, and I, I, I think for your mo emotional and your mental state, I think it's a great thing to do some of these things. Parks, museums, they all have reduced costs for cancer patients. Just ask. Next slide. Senior citizens benefit. And I've always told people that even when I can get senior citizens benefits, I'll probably say no, because I don't ever want to be considered a senior. But guess what? Everybody else is going to be looking at me and they're going to say, you're a senior. But you know what? It's, it's, it's a pride thing, right? It's one thing I have to get over. Okay, so don't forget to take advantage of discounts given to senior citizens. That's more money in your pocket. If you're interested in going back to college, there are colleges who, after a certain age, you can go to college for free. Why not continue your learning journey if you enjoy learning? So look out for those. So they have huge discounts and sometimes you can go for free. What a great opportunity. Why don't they switch that around and have the younger people go for free so you have money in your pocket earlier? But that doesn't work that way. Um, but look at some of these things that are available to you. Next slide. Do we have a next slide, Marisol? I think we're frozen. Is anybody still in the Zoom? Can anyone hear me? If they can send something on the chat or whatever it is, I, I don't know what's happened to the screen. Marissa, I don't know what's happened. Are you there? <laughs> Sorry, my power went out like oh, okay. and I lost my internet connection. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> Sorry, okay. let me share my screen again. Okay. Um, okay, we're back. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, can you go to the next slide? Yeah, sure. So I'm going to summarize all this up. There are so many opportunities for everyone to look around their house, to do a budget, a, a simple budget, to be aware of how we're spending our money on our car insurance, our health insurance, how we're going to the grocery store, other opportunities for reducing debt, paying off high interest rate debt, transferring to a low interest or zero interest card, that we can literally look at possibly saving thousands of dollars each family every year. Look at those subscriptions that you're no longer involved in, that you never care for. Get rid of cable and, and only buy or get what you want. 
so many things out there. Do you have a cell phone and a landline? Do you need the landline? Really? Very few people have landlines anymore. I mean, there's a lot of money. There's cost, there's there's a lot of cost savings that everybody, if we were mindful of what we're spending our money on, if we have these hobbies that we're spending money on, but we, that we spend money on, but we don't do those hobbies, our goals are are things we want to do are changing. I'm telling you, there's there's a lot we can do to save money and it can help reduce those out-of-pocket costs for your 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 health care because that money can re, be redirected there. Um so consider all these things or some of those things and keep a diary as to what you're doing and then look back at it at the end of the year and you can see how fruitful it is. And then look around and start saying, how can I simplify life? I'm looking around in my office. My, I have a huge office that goes down and I have a gym out in my garage. But guess what? Here in this part of the office, I also have a recumbent bike and a treadmill plus nine different types of, types of equipment in my garage, which I, by the way, I'm not using. Okay, so, and then I have three microwaves, extra microwaves in my house that are just sitting downstairs, really nice convection microwaves. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. We hold on to these emotional things that we really don't need, that we can give to somebody else and let them worry about it. Let them hang their clothes on that, that treadmill and let us put money in our pocket. But it's a, this is a way to reduce reduce our spending, put money in our pocket, increase our savings, and reduce our debt. So there is going to be a article out on this on this um, webinar. So feel free to look for that probably the, later on, middle to the end of this month. So I'll stop sharing for a minute just to see if we have any, any questions or any comments and you can enter those in the Q&A part. Um, I don't see any here, but I'll wait just a minute in case someone has questions. But it was a really interesting webinar. I definitely need to do that. I keep buying things that I think I'll use like gym equipment and then I'll I'm like no I'll just go to the gym and right. then I'll spend double on that right mm -hmm. so yeah I'll take that into consideration um so well I don't think we have any questions so I'll share my screen again to give the outro announcements but it was a great event thanks Diana for your mm -hmm. time okay so our next meeting will be on July 16th, it will be about out-of-pocket costs for clinical trial, trials or telehealth visits. Second opinions on how to talk to your insurance about these costs. So you'll receive the link, the promo email, as soon as we post the event page. And oh, we do have a question. Let me just ask this one before we go it says, how do we handle multiple myeloma grant and breast cancer grant? Um, so how do you handle myeloma grants? I'm, I'm, I don't know what the question is regarding the grants. Um, we, so I generally when you get grants for these things, and, and I know there's some people who have maybe myeloma itself, or they may have diff two different types of cancers. Um, you can get grants for each different type of cancer, but make sure that you are using them on time, that it goes annually from, if you got it in June, it's going to go to the end of May the next year, because if you don't use them and, and maybe you have to turn in receipts for every 60 days or whatever, or you'll, you'll also lose it, make sure you're using those grants and things accordingly. Consider if you have more than one grant, like for most myeloma, you may have one through HealthWell or through LLS. Use one of them to pay your premiums, get reimbursed for premiums, right? Use the other one for co-pays and deductibles. So there's a lot of ways you can use, qualify for more than one grant to take offsets from your care. Right now, copays.org and Health HealthWell do have grants available. And the HealthWell grant, I believe, is still $12,000. They did not reduce it. So they did have money available last week on multiple alumni, but go online and look. Copays.org does have money right now. Perfect. Thank you. Um, okay. So I'll give, you'll, re you'll receive the link to 
register for this upcoming event as soon as we have it ready. And we have three upcoming events for myeloma. One is the relapse refractory uh, myeloma patients group. We'll talk about the role of maintenance therapy in today's myeloma. And this 22nd in the afternoon, we'll have the non-secretory myeloma mental, aware mental health awareness uh, talk. And on Thursday, we'll have the Black Myeloma Health Community and we'll have the Understanding Lab Values. And you're all welcome to join all three of these events. And the link to sign up for more events we haven't mentioned, it's in the bottom of the screen. So you'll receive it in the follow-up email. Another thank you to our sponsors, Regeneron, Sanofi, Johnson & Johnson, GSK, and BMS. And thank you all and thank you, Diana, for this uh, really great webinar. See you soon. Bye.